glory to God, right? Uh, if you all can go to Hosea chapter 6, if you could stand for the reading of the word, please. And go to chapter 6, verse 6. All right, so it says, For I desire mercy and not sacrifice, and the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. You can be seated now. <laughs> that's all I was going to read. Well, I'm going to read a little bit more, but that's what I was going to start off with. And so this, this season of, of thanks is quite a bit different than any other or most any other right so uh, while we're all thankful for what we have right I'm mostly thankful for what God is right and so here it shows us God's mercy, right? And he knows his word, right? So much so that in Matthew chapter 9 and also in chapter 12, but if you want to go to chapter 9, let's see. Verse 13. Here Jesus is talking to some Pharisees. And he says, But go and learn what this means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice. He was exactly quoting Hosea in chapter 6. And this word mercy, right, it's not just an idea. It's not just... Uh, it's not something that's oh it just makes you feel good right it's actually an action right so you have to act mercifully you have to give mercy to other people and it's what God desires because he gives mercy to you every single day Right. We can read it. What what pastor just read? Um, Psalm eleven or not eleven, one hundred. He said his mercy is everlasting. Right. And if you go to Psalm one hundred and eighteen, the very last line of every single verse says, "His mercy endures forever." And then you go to Psalm 1, one thirty six, and every single verse ends with his mercy endures forever. And so that's why I'm thankful this year. Because God has been merciful to me specifically. But also I can see it, how he's been merciful to each and every one of you that are here today. So he desires mercy from us to each other. It's almost the same thing. You can equate it almost like love. Jesus said, love your neighbor as yourself. 
and love your God. Right? And upon these two commandments, all the law is based upon. You show mercy, you're showing an act of love. And that's why I'm thankful. Because God has been merciful to me. God has shown his love through his mercy every single day. And it's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And it's funny, not really funny, it's interesting that Jesus, when he quoted the second time, it was also to Pharisees because they weren't showing the mercy that he was requiring of them. And they were supposed to be teachers of the law. They were supposed to be leaders. And isn't it great that Jesus shows us mercy? Even though we don't necessarily show mercy to others. And it's wonderful, right? So that's what I'm thankful for. It's Jesus' mercy. Because it's for error. Amen. Hallelujah. How many is thankful for the mercy of God? Amen. Amen. The Davenport's fixing to come just so you know. In Matthew 18, there's a wonderful story for us to learn from where someone received amazing mercy. Jesus tells the story of of someone that received amazing mercy and they turned around and ran after someone that owed them something so they could fix what they were indebted for but didn't want to show mercy. And he tells the story of uh, taking that person and taking him and locking him up to the debtors until he could pay it all. How was he supposed to pay it if he was locked up? We like to hold people hostage. How are they going to pay that debt? We hold them hostage to the guilt. What Jesus is saying is, wait a minute. If how, many, how many here have been guilty and gone free because of the mercy of Jesus? You want to be like Jesus? Let the guilty go. Let the guilty go free. Any, any guilty been set free? That's a reason to be thankful. So you want to know what thankfulness is? Is being so thankful that you'll let the guilty go free in your life. And I'll say this. A lot of times when you let someone free from doing wrong to you, you're setting yourself free more than you're setting them free. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. That said, Brother Davenport, please come. Praise the Lord, everyone. I like that song, Ain't God Good. He's done so many blessings. Give me so many blessings. Undeserving, that's what I am. So I'm going to thank him, love, and praise him. A little more today and a whole lot more tomorrow. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I tell you, living for God is a is a great life. It, it doesn't exempt you from problems. It doesn't exempt you from the things that goes on in the world. But it does give you something that you can cope with. And I'm I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful today for for that. Now I'll tell you about Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. I like I like Thanksgiving better than any other holiday. 
I really do. You, you know why I like it a lot better than any other holiday, including Christmas? It's not commercialized like Christmas. And I'm going to tell you something. I hope I can explain myself before it's over with tonight. But being, but Thanksgiving is is as much important is as important as the day that Jesus was born. So I, I like Thanksgiving, I really do, because you get the you. Uh, it's kind of like, and Christmas is this way too. It, it's kind of like people kind of get together and they got more of a spiritual fault line than they do any other any other time of the year. Three day, three days a year, they get really, they get really religious. Yeah, Christmas, Easter, and Thanksgiving. Uh, no, I'm not going to say what I started to say. But I'm thankful tonight that I know who Jesus is. I'm thankful tonight that I know what He can do for an individual in their lives. I'm thankful tonight that I'm standing before you been changed. Because, folks, I'm telling you what, I was one of those fellows. I was raised in church. My dad was an apostolic Pentecostal preacher from the age of my age of about five years old. And up before that, he was Baptist. Nothing wrong with Baptists. They just don't have all the truth. But, but I was raised in it. And I made up my mind that I was not going to be a preacher. Because I watched my dad take a lot of abuse, you know. And I'm not going to go into a lot of details, but when my wife and I was dating, courting, and we was talking about getting married, she said, I don't want to marry a preacher. I said, you ain't going to have to worry about that. I ain't going to pre- be a preacher. I seen, I seen people walk over my dad and take too much, and Eddie Devonport wasn't that type of person. I was little, tall, and skinny, but I covered every inch of ground that I stood on, and I kept my ground. I had a temper that was next to the devil himself, really. And the reason I'm saying this, I'm giving God the thanks because it took God to change me. It took God to deliver me from that situation in my life, that temper. And friend, I, I... it didn't matter how big the guy was or how small he was, or it wouldn't, didn't even have to be a guy. I, I knocked the windshield out of a brand new Ford pickup I owned just because I got mad. My temper got away from me, and I had to drive it down the next day with my head hanging out the door, window door, the door window. I'll get it right here in a minute to see how to get me down to the, to the windshield place to put a new windshield in it. Now, wasn't that stupid? That was stupid. But I'm telling you what God can do for you tonight. Now, I got to hush because I got to preach a little bit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you got your Bibles, turn to 1 Thessalonians 5 and 18. I'm telling you, again, I'm going to say it. Living for God is the ultimate of life here on earth. Mm Mm-hmm. It gives you some power that you don't ordinarily have just living. Now, everybody knows that I, I like to live, and I want to live to be, I would literally like to live to be 140 or 50 years old. I really would. It, but I said live. I said live. I've got some hot rods. I'd want to get out and drive them, and I'd want to hot rod a little bit. You know, I don't, I don't want somebody pushing me in a wheelchair. I want to live, friends. I want to live. And I've been living with God the last 45, 50 years of my life. I've been living for God and with God. And God has done so much for me that I just like to continue. And one of these days, well, great thing about living for God is that one of these days he's going to come back after his church, which we're a part of, and we're going to be caught up together with him in the clouds of glory to have spend the rest of our days 
Well, it was just one big day, one eternal day with Jesus Christ as King of kings and Lord of lords. Hallelujah. But until then, until that day happens, I'm going to live in this world but I'm not going to be a part of this world. I'm going to be completely sustained from the world because I want to hear God say, well done, well done. What I want to to talk to you about a little bit tonight is, is the result of giving God thanks. And I also want to put this on a second, um, right underneath that, underneath that, the power of thanksgiving. The power of giving thanks. First Thessalonians 5 and 18 says this. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. There's two parts to this scripture. In everything, it didn't say for. It didn't say for everything give thanks. It said in. Everything. Give thanks. Now, when the devil comes around knocking on your door, you don't feel like much. That's like giving thanks right about that time. But you can always step up and say, listen, devil, you get out of my way and don't bother me no more. Now, he ain't going to take you at your word because he's going to keep coming back all the time. But the first part of this that I want to, in everything, not for. If you really want to confuse the enemy of your soul, if you really want to make him not know what's going on in your heart and in your life, learn to give thanks in that process of whatever problem that you're facing. The problem is never come to stay. It's always, and you can find this in the Bible, it always came to pass. So as it's passing by you, the problems of life, whatever it might be, as it's passing by you, just remember, if you want to confuse that enemy that is trying to under to undermine you and trying to get you to the place in your life and living for God that you want to throw your hands up and quit. If you will turn and start giving thanks to God, praising God for what he has done for you in the past, knowing that this also is going to pass and God's going to come out and help you to come out on top at the end of it. So in the midst of it all, whether it be sickness, whether it be financial, whether it be why I, I don't I don't I, I shouldn't even start it naming them. Just whatever life deals out to you. You see, we make our plans and then life happens. We try to take and figure it all out, and we do pretty much get it figured out, but then always something comes around. And when you get so aggravated at life, and I've been there, folks, I've been aggravated at life, and I I have to turn around and stop myself and say, wait a minute, give God praise and glory and thank him for what he's done for you in the past and he'll take care of that and give you a future that you can look forward to. The second part of this, the will of God. Now, uh, I'm not going to try to preach pastor's sermon but uh, uh, because he does a good job at it when he preaches it. But we've talked, heard, heard Job talked about a lot. Job. Now, you, there's 42 chapters in the book of Job. 42 chapters. And I'm telling you, the first one, 
from verse 1, first chapter, from verse 1 down to verse 5, it gives you the pedigree of Job. Man, I mean, he had sheep, he had oxen, he had camels, and what? Well, I, I, today I wouldn't want a camel. Never mind. But when you get down, when you get down to about verse, I think it's 8, verse 6, I think verse 6 starts out that one day that the sons of God gathered themselves together and stood before God, and guess who was in the midst of them? Satan. Satan. God walked over to him and said, Hey, fella, what have you been doing? Oh, he said, I, I just been going up and down the earth and all wandering all around. And God threw Job under the bus. In fact, God threw Job under the train. Right in the midst of everything. Right in the midst of that. God stopped him. Said, oh, you've been going up and down the earth, huh? Have you considered my servant Job? Oh, holy God, please keep your mouth shut about me. I'm doing all right. Hold on, God. God had already told Satan what he was. He said he's perfect and upright before me. He, he was really given, I mean, that pedigree of a Job just kept going on. It went, went from, the, uh, from the worldly goods to now he's got salvation in his heart. Now he's got God. It's, well, if at that time, whatever you want to call it, he had God in his life. He was doing God's will. He was perfect in God's sight. So I don't know. I don't even think anybody of us had got that yet anyway. Uh, uh, anyway, go on, Eddie. And, and, and it said, and it said, he just said, have you considered my servant Job? And there is 40 more chapters, about 38 of them just keep boom, boom. Well, first of all, I mean, Job was just introduced, and, and here he was, he was going into his children all got killed. Everything got taken away from him. Now, I'm going to get down. What I'm, what I'm told you all that for is, have you ever stopped to think, maybe in one of your trials, that God just happened to have been talking somewhere, and he said, hey, have you considered my servant? Now, you put your name in there. God, don't throw me under the bus. Don't throw me under the train. But I got something for you to think about. That's the second part. For it is the will of God concerning you. This is the will of God concerning you. You're going to have problems. You're going to have trials. You're going to have situations in life that you wished you did not have to face, and you don't want to face them. And if you could crawl under a rock somewhere, you'd be like that turtle and dig your way and get underneath that rock so far that nobody else could find you. But I'm telling you what one thing. There's no place you can hide from God. And when God gets ready to take and say, Hey, do you have you considered my servant that's walking down there in the midst of that trial in the midst of that COVID-19 in the midst of 2020 all of the problems that we've got going on but hang on church hang on folks hang on brothers and sisters I'm here to tell you tonight that God if you will start giving him praise if you will start giving him thanks if you will start giving him glory if you will start giving him whatever it is you're going to see a light at the end of that tunnel and it's not going to be no train that's going to get you head on. It's going to be the power of God to give you that deliverance that you need to get through that day, that year, and that month, or whatever it might be. God has got your back. God has got your back. God will take care of you. Put him first in your life. Make sure he stays there. 
Make sure you talk to him. Make sure you get a Somebody said, oh, I can't find the will of God. Well, here. Right here it is. Right here it is. You'll have to forgive me. I don't carry a phone. I do. I carry a phone, but it's a flip phone. And I can't run one of those paths like Pastor does. I'm going to leave that for him. I'll just take my book. I got two brothers. And uh, one of my youngest brothers, he calls me quite often. And he always calls me pretty early in the morning. What are you doing, Eddie? Sometimes he calls. My nickname is Buck. Buck, what are you doing? I said, I'm reading the book. I'm reading the book. And he's, he was raised just like me. don't live for God. And he said, you must be reading the Bible, huh? I said, you got it. That's the book. This is the book. You want to know what God's will is for your life? Get in the book. Get in the book. It's in there. And God's for you. The Bible even tells you if God's for you, who can be against you? Give God the glory. Give God the praise. Give God the thanks that he, that he deserves. Because I'm telling you one thing. He was the only one that was able to come to an earth that was filled with sin and degradation and all everything that goes along with it and be that spotless lamb of God. All of the sins before was rolled ahead of everybody with the blood of the goats and the bulls and the heifers and all of that, all of the sacrificial. But one day God stepped out on the scene and the Bible tells us one thing in there that I, I cherish a lot. When the fullness of time came, God sent forth his son made of a woman, born by a virgin, and he was brought to set people free. I'm here today to tell you he deserves any kind of a thanks you can give him, ever how you want to say it, ever how you want to live it, but the best thanks you can ever give him is to live a life that's separated from the world and being holy unto God who give you that breath of life. And he breathed into man the breath of life. So Job found out, Job found out that living for God and keeping God in his heart and in his life, and not only that, but giving him thanks. At the end of the first chapter, he fell down on his face and he thanked God and gave God praise. And everything had just been taken away from him. Thanksgiving. Giving God the thanks. Giving God the thanks. i got to hurry. I, I've already took about my ten minutes. But I'm going to go a little longer. If that's all right, Pastor. First Peter 4 and 4. Wherein, think it not strange... that you run not with them to the same excess of right speaking evil of you. God is warning us. I want to skip down to verse number 12. I, I started too soon there. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trials, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. Think it not strange. You know, I found out something. I'm not a big fisherman. I have to clean them when I catch them, and I don't like that. But I always found out that a dead fish just goes with the flow. But the good ones, they can swim up stream. They get not strange concerning the fiery trials. I would like to stand here tonight and tell you when you repent of your sins and being baptized in Jesus' name and you get filled with the Holy Ghost, that God's Spirit will raise you about four foot off of the ground and just sail you through life. 
but it ain't going to happen. Do you know why it's not going to happen? Because the devil has been to where he knows we're going. And he don't want you to go there. He knows where he's going. And he wants to take you with him. So he is not going to... He is, hey, look, the Holy Ghost is the best thing you'll ever have in your life. Forgiveness and God filling you with his spirit, that's the best thing you'll ever have in your life. Sister Riddell, I, uh, there used to be a, a group of singers, and I can't remember the, I, I, I can't remember what it was, but they were religious singers. They were black folks. And this guy that was leading them, got excited about God and everything that he had done for him and God wound up being his Cadillac. Now that might sound strange to you. I had a friend of mine one day tell me he, he knew I was I worked with him and, and he said Eddie everybody needs crutch. I said Denny let me tell you something. I don't have a crutch. I got a motorized wheelchair. I got God on my side. I'm on God's side. I'm, I'm on God's side. And when you're on God's side, God's for you. So I don't know tonight. You might call me having a crutch. I don't know. I'm trying to stay away from that right now, but I wonder when how long it'll be. But I'm still yet allowing myself to take and be swayed sometimes with the different things that comes my way not to the quitting of not don't don't get me wrong I'm not saying that I'm not not to point to giving up on God I just don't understand quite what he's trying to do and I need him to explain it to me a little better And sometimes I pray and I ask God to do stuff that I know that it's his will for him to do, but he don't hear me. And I found out one day somebody sent me a, sent me a, uh, a card back when I was pastoring, and it said, God answers all of my prayers. Some of them he says yes, some of them he says no, and some he, he says, you've got to be kidding me. And I found myself in that category God, I'm prob you probably think, what is wrong with you? Don't you know I've got it all in control? Don't be, don't be soon shaken in your mind. If you know you've got the truth, you've got the truth, and the truth will make you free. If you know you've got Jesus Christ in your life, you can be set free from those things that bind you and bothers you and tries to drive you out of the presence of the Almighty God. Think it not strange concerning these, these things that, uh, that comes our way because our enemy... And sometimes, a pastor has said this many times, I remember him saying, it, go look in the mirror. Sometimes that's your greatest enemy. Yeah, I understand that. The old flesh was sold into sin. I'm going to be honest with you tonight. I wish God wouldn't have put that tree of the knowledge of good and evil in the garden. I just had, as, as for, for Eddie Davenport, I said, God, did you really know? You, 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 you knew he was going to eat of that tree or Eve was going to eat of that tree and, 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 and she was going to persuade Adam to eat of that tree. Why didn't you just cut that tree out of, out of there? And like a lead of bricks, it hit me one day. I want you to live me because you want to. I want you to live me because you love me. I want you to live for me because you know what? You found out what I can do for you. I can set you free from all that stuff. It don't free you from the temptation because the devil's going to make sure. It's, that, that dude, 
He don't know the. He, it's a small little two-letter word. He don't understand the meaning of no. He keeps coming back, coming back, coming back. And one day he gets tired of coming back. He said, well, I can't get him on that, but I'll get him somewhere else. And he comes around and tries it in different ways. I tell you, folks, tonight, I believe God can do anything. My problem is he's getting myself to where he'll do it for me. And I got to work on that. I got to get myself to where would I ask God something that he will answer me. And not just say, you got to be kidding. Probably the most time it is, you go to the book and you'll find out. My God, I didn't mean to, I didn't mean to say all this. But I'm excited about living for God because I know what God can do for you. I took a look at the book and I found out that there's some things that God really likes to do for his people and not only likes to, he wants to do them. But the problem is, the problem is, and is, is we fail to give him thanks. I, I remember the old pastor, a ch- pastor of my church when I was younger. I, uh, I drove him around a lot, and we were talking one day, and I'll remember this as long as I live. And he, he said, buddy, let me tell you something. He said, when you don't think you've got anything to ask God to forgive you for, just tell him that you're sorry you're human. Just tell him you're sorry that you're human. Sorry, God, that I'm human. Because I sometimes let humanity get in my way of really living for you. But I've learned in all of that to always give thanks, regardless of what happens. I've went through some things in my life and I'm not going to get into them, but I went through some things in my life that I did not know why. And I went to God and asked him, and I said, God, I am sorry if I'm not supposed to question you. Then it dawned on me, the flash questioned God. Jesus said, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? As we was hanging on the cross. And, and, and God, not in an audible voice, but in a still, small, gentle, whatever. He said, I see everything from beginning to the end. And I chose this for you instead of what I've seen in the future. I want you to know that's how much God loves you. Things may not go exactly like you want them to, but God sees the future. He sees the future. And if he thinks I'm going to, if he thinks that I live to be 140 years old, I would fail somewhere around 100 years old. I'd rather him to take me at 90 years old than to even come close to failing God. What am I talking about? These things that comes our way. Again, I'll keep coming back to this. The power and the results of thanksgiving. You can fall. You can make a mistake. You can fail God. But if you'll go back and ask him to forgive you, and then start thanking him for the forgiveness. He will forgive you and put you back in to be his son or his daughter. That's the kind of God that we're living for. That's the kind of God that wants to take care of. First Peter chapter 1 and verse number 7. That the trial of your faith being much more precious than than of gold that perish, though it be tried in the fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory 
at the appearing of Jesus Christ. I want you to understand something. This scripture here, we take it so many times that when he comes back after his church, but it also includes us living for him today. Because when you repent of your sins, you're baptized in Jesus' name for the remission of those sins. There's something interesting here with this. If you read in the, in the, in the Bible, you'll find out that everything is done. Purification is with the shedding of blood. The, 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 back in the old sacrificial days, it was all about the shedding of blood, catching the blood, taking it in, sprinkling it on the mercy seat. I don't have time to get into all of that, but it's all. But that's just where, for the remission of sins, that's why you're baptized in Jesus' name. That's the main reason you get baptized in Jesus' name, is to get your sins remitted. And then the infilling of the Holy I know you, I'm preaching to the choir tonight, but in case you run across somebody who wants to know why it's so important to be baptized in Jesus' name, you want your sins forgiven, don't you? You want them remitted, don't you? That's how you get it done. At the appearing of the Lord Jesus Christ, he appeared 2,000 years ago plus, whenever it was. I don't know the date for sure, but he appeared somewhere back in there. And he manifested himself in the flesh. He did it for a reason. The spotless lamb of God, his blood, cleanses us from all sins. So at the appearing of that, I got one more scripture I'm going to read. It's found in the book of 1 John. 1 John chapter 4 and verse number 4. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is within the world. We are of God. God lives inside of us. You know, there's a scripture in the Bible that tells us to separate ourselves from the world and touch not the unclean thing and I'll receive you. And I, I find myself every once in a while I have to check myself and check, and check myself double times to make sure that I'm not allowing the world to come into my life in any form or fashion. And I fight with that. Because a lot of things is pleasing to the flesh. But the problem is everybody else is doing it, and I'm supposed to be separated from them. So I have to, get to, have to do that. This all is our major protection in a world of distraction. All of the scriptures I've read to you tonight, all the words I've said to you tonight, this, these are major protection. God's word is major protection, but we're living in a world of distraction. And we've got to learn to separate our lives from the distractions that draws our hearts and our minds away from God. God is the most important thing in this world. And our world has forgot about him. Our world has put him on a shelf somewhere. Our world denies him every day. I want to make sure that in this place that I'm living, this world that I'm living in, there's nowhere... In fact, Thomas David, I think it was, that said, if, I'm, if I make my bed in hell, you're there. If I take the wings of the morning, behold, I'll find you there. And you're always there. God is always with you. He's before you, he's behind you, and always beside you. All you've got to do is give him thanks, and he'll appear. 
I'd like to tell this, if I may, real quick, and Pastor, I'm going to turn it back over to you. We went to one of our favorite Mexican places to eat the other day, and I don't know, they'd had some problems there, and it was four or five policemen that was outside, and one of them finally came in, and I went up to pick up my food, and he was standing there, and you could tell that he was just, he was perplexed about something. And I looked at him, and I said, morning, sir, how are you today? Well, I'm doing pretty good. I said, listen, I want to thank you for your service. And his face brightened up. Now, if you tell, if you tell somebody that's in the world, thank you, and it brightens up their face, I wonder how much it will brighten up God's face if you start saying, thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your many blessings. Thank you for all you've done for me and what you're going to do for me. You see, God does so much for us, and he does so much for us that we don't even know about. Every time I get out on the freeway and I get home, I say, thank you, Lord. I just got about got run over today. I was driving 75 mile an hour, and some dude passed me like I was sitting still. Thank you, God. God's good, isn't he? Enjoy your Thanksgiving tomorrow. But you know what? I do it like I told some people I was with. I told you I was going to hush, and I lied to you. I apologize for that. But I got to tell you this. I got to tell you this. I was working back when I was working, and I went into the office. It was Christmas time. And, uh, and uh, the girls in there wanted to know what I was going to do. They knew my, my wife and I had been married over 50 years. And, and they said, what are you getting your wife for Christmas? I said, nothing. And they said, Nothing. What, what, what's wrong with you, Eddie? You better buy her something. I said, no. We live half Christmas 365 days a year. I said, when you get our age, if in the middle of July you see something you want, you buy it because you might not be around for Christmas. Hey, tomorrow's Thanksgiving. You may not make it to tomorrow. I may not make it to tomorrow. I'm thanking God tonight for what he's done for me and what he's going to do for me. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Isn't God good? Amen. Amen. I'm going to cover one real quick subject that I think is vitally important. I want to put something in your toolbox of life. Appreciate the enthusiasm. Brother Ezekiel and Brother Davenport sharing some of their thoughts. But a lot of times we face some things that it would almost seem like we'd be psychotic to be thankful for. Thankfulness when the refrigerator's full and the bank account's full and you got a wonderful things to say is easy. But how are you thankful when things are going wrong? It's easy to talk about being thankful when things are going good, but what do we need in our toolbox biblically to help us when things are upside down? And so you may be sitting here today and it's a stretch to understand thankfulness. Brother Ezekiel covered a, an extremely important part about thankfulness. When you understand God's grace and God's mercy to be thankful because of what was given to you. Well, what if life's given you lemons it's easy for someone to say make lemonade but it's hard to make lemonade when your hands are clenched and you're ready to dot someone's eye now understand the bible tells us that in the last days perilous times will come well one of the one of the things in that list is unthankfulness right next to unthankfulness is unholiness unholy now if you're going through a trial, you start to wonder, okay, wait a minute now. What, if you want me to deal with holiness and thankfulness in a trial? Uh-huh. How do we do that? One of the times Paul was in prison for his faith. Now listen, 
if you're facing stuff because you're stancing faith in God, our nature is to look for an easy way out, or another word we use, compromise. Not thankful. It's natural to want to compromise because what do we want to do? We want to ease the pain. Look, if your hand's on the stove and it hurts, what do you do? You pull it away. I was doing a, my dad built a little Olympics thing back in the 70s. We were kids and I kept doing the high jump. And I told him, every time I jump, it hurts. You know what he said? Well, stop doing it. <laughs> Revelation for a, I was never the sharpest knife in the drawer, but anyway. But that's not the answer when it comes to living for God. A lot of people, it hurts when I make a stand for God, so we stop. It hurts to be involved in ministry or be someone prominent in the church, so you stop doing it. It's easy to get up and preach or teach and talk when, hey, it's all hunky-dory. But as soon as it gets bad, now, in, in Philippians, I'm going to read from the ESE because of the vernacular is really easy to understand. Paul is suffering persecution, surrounded with trouble. And he said, now, I want you to know, brothers, that what has happened to me has really served to advance the gospel. As a result, this is Philippians chapter 1, 12 through 19. It has become clear throughout the whole palace guard and to everyone else that I am in chains for Christ. It has become clear. Everybody knows that the, the hatred and the ugliness and what I'm facing right now, because a lot of times people want you to think that Christianity is a fire escape from problems. Let me find that liar, and I'll repent after I get through slapping the fire out of him. It's a lie. You're going to suffer persecution for his name's sake. It's easy to talk about being thankful for all the wonderful things, but he's letting us know right here and now how to be a mature saint, a seasoned saint of God, a real Christian on being thankful when all hell's breaking loose, you're in chains and you're locked down. Now we don't need no mamsy pamsy little stories about thankfulness when we're going through hell. We need the truth to what's going on and we got a man saying right here, when it's all upside down, you can still be thankful. Someone earlier mentioned Job. Job's strength came not because he was so stupid he couldn't feel his life being torn apart, but he held God closer than he held anything he had. Let me tell you why. When you compromise, you're holding something closer than you're holding God. Paul's saying right here, but persecution has come out that God is getting glory. Everybody in the palace Everyone knows I'm in chains for my stand. He's thankful that God is getting glory. He's thankful. He's not psychotic. He's not thankful. He's in chains. But he's tied to something bigger than this life. You may want to live to 140. You can have that. Uh-uh. Mm -mm. I want Jesus to get me out of here. Uh-huh. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I want, I'm tied to that. Not this. I know what this is. The Bible tells us it's a few days and full of trouble. Now, I'm thankful for every minute. But if eternity is expressed as that long, God must know something weak. Oh, I want to be tied to something there and hold loosely what's here. Because he says... It has become clear throughout the whole palace guard and to everyone else that I'm in chains for Christ. That trial is to God's glory because he didn't compromise. He said, because my chains. Hey, folks, did you hear what he said? Brother Lawrence, he said chains. 
we live in a world today that you can't preach how we preach around here in most churches because people don't want you to talk about change, struggle, fight, battle, making a stand. But I tell you what, you'll find in every other church I've got to compromise. Compromise. He goes on, most of the brothers in the Lord have been encouraged to speak the word of God more courageously and fearlessly. You ever wonder why the folks around you waffle and don't become an inspiration to you? These guys have inspired a man in chains because when he stood in chains and still stood for God and was thankful, he realized that all this is causing everybody around him to stand up more for God. He was thankful for the result of his thankfulness. Oh, Lord. Can you imagine the happiness that Paul found in his chains when his example and stand for Christianity and not compromise elevated the glory of God and stirred the whole palace to speak up. Mm. Your witness is important. It's valuable. Being thankful. What did Job say? Though he slay me, yet I will compromise. Hallelujah. Acts 5 and 41, listen. Listen. And they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. Paul's attitude while in prison was demonstrated, spread abroad because of his devotion to Christ because he's able to stay positive and understand I'm tied to something greater on what it looks like I'm losing. Mm. His stance motivated people to live for God and become thankful. I get what's going on here. For Paul, it was all about serving the Lord. Now, it's not that he didn't care about anything else. He ate. He lived. He escaped in a basket one time. It wasn't like he was running around abandoned trying to commit suicide. He wasn't looking for trouble. But when you make a stand for something that's the opposite direction of the world, you're going to suffer persecution. This is where we find out, are you really thankful for God? True thankfulness is when it's all going to hell and you're like, that's because I'm making a stand for something. So he's suffering. And it served a purpose of bringing him and others closer to God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Your life may not be going well right now. You may have faced some things and are facing some things. And when we look at Thanksgiving, you might be really wondering right now, what am I to be thankful for? I think what Paul and seasoned saints will tell you to help us put things in perspective that no matter what you're dealing with, what I'm dealing with, that in all honesty, it could be worse. Job lost everything. No, he didn't. He maintained his integrity. His own wife wanted him to bail. So often, personally, when I'm dealing with something, it's easy for my finite mind to feel like, well, look, they got it worse than I do. Now, that may help me be thankful, but it doesn't change my situation. <laughs> but it allows me to look at the overall picture while I deal with my situation. You can find the reason to be thankful when you look at life correctly, 
You're not trying to keep up with the Joneses to be thankful. Jesus said it this way. What will a man give in exchange for his soul? Well, I lost everything. Oh, no, you didn't lose the most important thing. There was an experiment done in New York Central Park where an advertising firm dressed a man up as a blind, uh, dressed a man up that was blind. They gave him a cup to collect money. They put a sign around his neck that read, I'm blind. He made $4. The next day, they dressed him up the same way, real nice, and placed him in the same place, but they changed the sign to read, it's springtime and I'm blind. That day he collected more than $40. The reality and the understanding caused people to realize how blessed they were that they were able to see all the beautiful things that happen at springtime. They were able to see the greening up of, the, of, of, the, of all the vegetation, the flowers, the birds, they, they, they could see the sun rises and the sunsets, and they became thankful rather than just say, hey, we all got problems, pal. To... It's easy to take things for granted. The ability to see, to hear, to walk, to enjoy the beauty of a life. The, tomorrow when you get up and you have people around you or you have breath in your body, or that you have your right mind. Or how about you can look back and be thankful. I survived some things. That lets me know I'll survive this too. Are you hearing me? Thank God for the breath in my body. Thank God for the hope that I have. I can be thankful regardless of my situation because I'm thankful for God more than anything else. I want to be tied to him, then I'm always thankful. I can always be thankful no matter the situation because like someone said earlier, it didn't come to stay, it came to pass. That's the understanding that, hey, my life is, goes along a whole lot longer than this. I'm going to close with this. There was a pastor that went on a missions trip. And while he was leading worship at a leopard colony, a leopard colony on the island of Tobago, During the worship service, people were singing, and he, a woman turned around who had been facing away from the pulpit, and it was the most hideous sight he'd ever seen. It was the most distorted face the pastor had ever seen. The woman's nose and ears were entirely gone. She was lifting up fingerless hands in the air. And as the previous song came to a close with excitement in that raspy, distorted voice coming from the most hideous face he ever seen, she, she shouted out loud, can we sing? Count your many blessings. The pastor just stood there for a moment as we all stand. Stunned about the place of that request, where that request came from. Overcome with emotion. He handed the microphone and, and, and stumbled off the stage into the back area. One of the other mission team members watched him go and followed to make sure he was everything was all right. And trying to appease the situation and not going on that that mission team member said I, I, I guess you'll never be able to sing that song again oh, yes I will replied the pastor but I'll never sing it the same way again no matter what happens we can be thankful no matter what's going on we can be thankful we have a God 
We, 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 we have a creator, a lover that no matter when the earth passes away and, and everything ceases, he won't and his love is everlasting. You can be tied to this world and want to live for a thousand years. Oh, but Jesus, that I could be with you for eternity. We are admonished. We are encouraged. I believe we are even commanded in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. In everything. That too, what you're thinking of right now. In everything. That right there, that, 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 that's keeping you awake at night. In everything, though you've bled, though you've hurt, though they were wrong, though it was unjust, though it looks like you were never exonerated in everything. Give thanks. Even when you don't feel like it, give thanks. Even when you're exhausted, give thanks. No matter what's going on, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. 